Hello, good to see you. Welcome to the programme. Uh, I did say that he was back by popular demand. I did get shouted down by a few people, mostly with red and white scarves on, who said you've missed two letters out of that. Not popular demand. There should be two letters <laughs> in front of that. However, I did get a unanimous vote of approval from the blue and white half of Sheffield. And actually, he's got a soft spot for Sheffield United, my guest tonight. He's actually said so. I'm not sure if he'll repeat it on the programme, but he's actually said so in the pre-programme chat. Delighted to welcome back Gary Megson. Gary, uh, it, it's good to see you again so soon. It's good to see you, apart from that. <laughs> Where have you got that from, the soft spot? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, funnily yeah. enough, I have. I, I, it's not a soft spot. I do it's like the banter. No, it's not. It's, I like the banter with them. I like, I like all that. But so long as they can take it as, uh, as much as they give it, and, uh, and they do. I think they do. I just picked you up a little bit on the uh, the blue and a blue and white half of Sheffield. I think it's two thirds myself. <laughs> <laughs> you would even more I unpopular. Could, I, I could not possibly <laughs> no, possibly no. comment on yeah. that. <laughs> Seeing you back so soon is a, is a good sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you must have enjoyed it before. We certainly did. I yeah, certainly it was did. Yeah, it was a giggle. Back yeah. in January, it was January, and things were looking was good it? for Sheffield Wednesday, yeah, even yeah. in in January. Yeah. Looking even better now, but I don't think you're that surprised, are you? No, I, I back Wednesday. I thought like when when the new chairman came in, and the people that he started to like you know bring in, and the way the club was developing, I just I just looked at the uh, the division itself, and I didn't see anything outstanding. I thought there's some decent sides, but I saw no team that was uh, was outstanding. I, I thought Hull would uh, would actually go automatically, yeah. but then when I was watching it and seeing what was going on, and especially with the signing of Forestieri. I thought Wednesday could take some stopping and you know, hopefully it proves the case. OK, we'll talk more as the programme goes on about Hull, about Forestieri, about Semedo and one or two other players that you, you, you know about, and the game, of course, itself at Wembley a week on Saturday, the, the championship play-off final. I've got a few greetings to pass on before, before we start. Um, Ian Crocker, Sky commentator that you know from the... Yeah, yeah. From the Midlands, West yeah, Brom days. Yeah. Richard O'Donnell asked me to say hello to you and pass yes, on his best wishes. He was lad. in the studio last week. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe so. He was, um, he was, he was a good lad. I'm glad it's gone well for him because he, uh, he never, he, he got his opportunity once or twice at Wednesday, but it was always going to be difficult for him. But uh, sometimes you do have to, you know, maybe take a, a maybe if, if not backwards, a sideways step to get your career going. And yeah. it's great to see him doing it. It so is well. good. It is good. Yeah. Uh, and you gave him a bit of a break at, uh, at Wednesday. Uh, messages too new to mention from the blue and white half half half, half of the city <laughs> mostly favorable nearly all favorable <laughs> and a few messages from the other half of the city uh, mostly unfavorable mm -hmm. but I did smile at this one um, who replied and said and said when I said I got the ginger Mourinho uh, back in the studio, he said, "What well, is Sean, Sean Dyche coming in?" <laughs> <laughs> which, which, which leads me to Burnley, because we'll talk about other things as well. Leicester, Burnley, Sean Dyche. I mean, that's got a great grain of common sense going through, isn't it? Burnley going down, keeping the manager, finances under control. Mm. Yeah, promotion it's, again. Um, you know, it, there are a, a few clubs. I was at one myself, West Brom, and <clears throat> you know, for the first couple of years, it's okay, because when you do go up, everybody expects you to come straight back down, and, and in the main, it will happen unless you've got finance. And um, you know, what what you can do is make sure that you know you don't bankrupt the club, but you make the club stronger. So in the event that you may go down, then you come back. But you know, Burnley have done a terrific job. But they did, I think, was it nine million pounds they spent on Gray? They did, although they'd sold Ings for yeah. a lot more than that. Yeah. Actually, and so right. uh, Sean Dyche, when I spoke to him after they clinched promotion, was actually saying, "Look, we balance the books." Yeah, and, and, yeah. at some clubs you have to do that. Yeah, it's uh, the trick is it's keeping that going because you don't accept it. Look, when, like I say, when I was at uh, West Brom, we got, got promoted with a wage bill that was, I think, it was the 18th lowest in the division, and and we got ourselves up. And then we hardly spent any money at all. Uh, the wages and there was, the players were going to go on strike in uh, in pre-season. It was a nightmare yeah. time. Uh, consequently, we did go down, but we went down with a good championship side, and we came back up. We'd, we'd done it with four games to go. Um, but then after that, the chairman, I, you know, I said, it's terrific that you go up with four games to go because it gives you a start on everybody else. But we were dancing around handbags for three weeks. Us, we're doing nothing. So I just mentioned and I said, I remember using that phrase to him. We're dancing around handbags. How much are we going to spend next year? Nothing. 
He says, we'll, we'll put the wages up. And I, I said, there's no point, because you won't get good, good players, players for those wages. And I said, we're just going to become a yo-yo club. And um, you know, my view on it was that you don't want to do that. You've got to kick on from that. His view yeah. was like we run the club on a, on a, a sound financial basis. And that's when you left. It'd be interesting to see if Burnley do kick on this time. Mm. Because they'll need to, won't they, in order to... to they they to will do, that. because like, I, th I think the, uh, the steps up through the other three divisions, uh, obviously there's an improvement each time you go up, but the step from championship to, uh, to premiership is, is huge. And it's still another step in that. You know, when you get to the premiership, there's, there's a few teams that are just happy to, to be in there. Yeah. There's a few teams that would, like, you know, make sure that we stay up, and then the rest are trying to win it. But um, it's, it's very, very difficult, because like some of the teams at the top of there are buying a team for the Champions League and a team for the Premiership, and then one like in behind that for if something goes wrong. Yeah. Bournemouth and Watford have done, have done okay this year. Yeah, they? Uh, they have. But again, like you know, people look at those and um, as they say, "Oh, little Bournemouth and all that." They they were spending nine million on a left back. They, they spent yeah. seven million, I think it was, on a on a guy from Russia who didn't get a game in the Championship. So. It, it, it's sometimes a little bit of a misnomer that, like you know, oh, yeah. little this and little that. It, in, comparable to the, the big teams in the uh, in the Premiership, I'm sure there are, but I bet you they weren't the lowest spenders. No, and when they lured um, the manager back, Eddie Howe from from Burnley, mm. I heard one or two rumours that they were actually paying him. This was in the Championship, seven hundred and fifty thousand a year, which is a a very very big uh, salary at that level, isn't it? I, nearly as much as you earn that, isn't it? It's got to be well, kicking on for that. Well, no, <laughs> Gary, I wouldn't go that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Well, you, you'll have seen that kind. Of, you'll have seen that kind of money, of yeah, course. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, it's getting interesting. That a season of remarkable. Before we go into Sheffield Wednesday, um, we, we, we've done the exit, and if people don't, you know, I did the, the, the last time. It was brilliant, really well received. Everybody was delighted at your honesty, as they always are. Uh, there is a reason why we didn't. Actually, it stands to reason there was obviously disagreements and a few rows behind the scenes. The exact words, uh, people were being very naive if they thought we were going to tell them that on a family show. So we, 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 we'll consider that. <laughs> consider that close. You've just said them without on. saying them, haven't you? We've, we've said it without <laughs> saying it. Yeah. Um, we mentioned Sean Dyche. Uh, I met a remarkable stories this season. Leicester City. We've got one even locally. Rotherham United. Now they were down, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, is it? I think it's well, well enough documented that me and him don't get on. But when you say him, who do you mean? Colin, I've got no time for him <laughs> at all, and he doesn't like me. But um, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I think he's a good manager. And, and I think that one of the things is, um, that's happened in football, it's, there's a lot in terms of management, that how you talk, how you dress. Some like there's a, I better not say it, but some be baffles brains. There's a lot of people that I listen talking, and I think it's just like just no common sense at all. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to get results, and he gets he gets results. And, and when he got there, and uh, you know they did so well, it was certainly no surprise to myself, you know. And, and I think if they'd have got like a flippity gibbet type manager, they'd have gone down. But you get somebody in who says, right, this is what we're doing, this is how we're doing it, right, let's get on and get it sorted. And if you don't do it, you won't be playing. If you do, you're in and we're off and running. So it was no surprise. You share some of the same qualities. I mean, I would have thought you would have been ideal for that role as well. I'd have backed you in similar circumstances to keep rolling. I'd, I'd, I'd have backed myself, because I've done it before, you know, like kept teams up. And they just, like sometimes, you just go into a football club and you know they did i did it myself down there down at hillsborough you go in and it's the sheffield wednesday that i knew was nowhere near the sheffield wednesday that i joined and it was a bit of a shock and um you know and i'm, I'm looking at it and thinking we're, we're six places above bottom of the second division here with, with atrocious the stuff that's going on and we've got people driving around in a soft top bentley in the car park and it just needed completely sorting out like to the point where you just have to start again but it's very difficult doing that as a manager because people have got contracts so ones that you want out they might be stuck there for two years so it was uh, it was important to draw a line in the sand and say right this is where we're, where we're going this is how we're doing it and you know the the things that annoyed me down at Wednesday were like being told you've got to take a million off the wage bill and then pick the paper up at night and in the star it says you haven't been told that you've got to sell players to bring them in well I had and, and that gets on you, you know, it does get you down and, and you do, or I certainly get upset about it. Um, but that's what we did. We sorted out the wages and all that. 
and um, you know it, we got the club moving forward. Yeah. And when I went to Wednesday, I knew what we needed to do. Needed to get up, yeah. and like, and the biggest biggest asset we had was Hillsborough and the support. No, nothing else. That was the biggest asset, and you had to use it. You know, and it, there was a load of tosh going about. Oh, the players are a little bit scared about playing at Hillsborough. Yeah. That's what you sign for Sheffield Wednesday for. Yeah. Especially in that division, that's yeah. why you're signing because of the crowd. You can't yeah. therefore turn around and say, well, "It's a bit difficult for us." You've got to use it to your advantage, which is what we did. And some of the things, like you know, we do what we want. This is Sheffield Wednesday, yeah. you know. Like, and we pushed and pushed and pushed that all the time. I took mm. the players on the back of the cop to show them what other people are seeing, and the reaction of players seeing that was like it was amazing because none of them had ever been up there you certainly turned the tide on that that fear factor if it was there has gone mm. uh, Sheffield Wednesday relish and embrace that crowd now and they certainly have done this season you use it because it's players. like it's worth a lot of points to you I know it's yeah. not not the right thing to say but you know like you, you, when you go to some of the really huge premiership grounds as a player and as a manager yeah. you want nil down before you start you've got to score like yeah. you know to make it one yeah. nil to get an equalizer at some of them grounds because like the referees and the way that things are done because of the pressure that's on them at big clubs mm. you've got to try and use that when you've got that advantage and Wednesday are mm. talk about Wembley in a moment just to round up on on on, on Rotherham and and Neil Warnock um, he did do a remarkable job he kept them up uh, and and people have said, why don't I get you two together on the show? And I'd probably be left in the studio on my own if I tried to. It would never it. ever happen. No. <laughs> There's more chance of getting a dodo and a unicorn. <laughs> and I'm the unicorn. Okay. <laughs> That's a point. We'll, 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 we'll move on from there. Are you going to Wembley? Let me ask you that. No, I won't, I won't go. I've, I've, I follow Sheffield Wednesday and I love the club, but I'm not like a, a supporter like like they are. You know, like to go down on a, a Monday on a, uh, to Brighton. And that, that level of commitment is, is like, you know, fantastic and it's awesome. But I'm not that kind of supporter. I, I don't go to football matches for, for enjoyment. I've, I've gone to football matches throughout my life because, because it's work. And, uh, you know, and I don't sit there thinking I'll go down and, and watch a game. You know, and it's, it's not the same. And, and I've got to be honest with you, I find it really, really difficult. And I can't deal with not being in football. I'm either not in it mm. or I am in it, but I don't want to be halfway in it. So what I do is just yeah. go down a different route. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch it, but I won't. I won't you go find down it hard work watching? I mean, obviously you'd prefer to play even now, and you'd prefer to manage, but not doing either of those things makes it awkward to to to, to go. You watch it, it at home on TV. I, I do, but I don't watch it right the way through because I, I have to turn like a lot of the pundits. I turn the the sound down because I listen now and. Uh, you know, there's a lot of them uh, ex-players. There's not very many ex-managers. If Sue Ness is on, I'll listen. If Strachan's on, those kind, of, I'll listen because you think like, well, they've they've done it from the other side. But I'd, I was listening to one. I can't remember what game it was. I think it was Manchester United and uh, West Ham. And the guy was saying, well, I can't believe he's taking him off with just a few minutes left. Yeah. And the team that's like, you know, that, that's winning, you know damn well there's a few minutes left. There's a lot of high balls going to get thrown in now. Yeah. You don't need your five foot four in his stilettos on the pitch. You've got to get him off and make sure you can deal with that because that's what's going to happen in the last yeah. two minutes. Players, nine times out of ten, wouldn't know that. Managers would. OK, well, well, there's a vacancy then for an experienced former manager as a, <laughs> as a pundit on television, isn't there? Oh, yes. Well, that, that's, in my view, that is what they should be doing because it's, well, it's, like, it's like, you know, um, players and I, oh, they should do this and they should do that. And, it, and, and I was one myself and I was exactly yeah. the same. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. When that door closes and you're sat there as a manager, it is entirely different. It's like saying the stewardess can fly the plane because she's been doing her job for like, yeah. you know, 20 years. It's entirely different, yeah. even though you're on the same plane. You're not going to Wembley, but I, I would imagine you'll be kicking every ball. I think you must have been kicking a few clearances the other night at Brighton. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I would imagine for any died in the wall Sheffield Wednesday fan, that first half was terrifying. No, nothing short of. It was, and uh, the not, not fortunate is not the right word because they signed them and they did a good job, but they had to really rely on on the people they've relied on all through this, this season because, like you know, Forestieri gets a lot of the headlines and like, Bannon gets a lot of the headlines. I think Wednesday's built on the goalkeeper and the uh, and the two centre halves that en enable that to go on around them and. They really came to the fore on uh, on that game. Westwood, Lees, and especially Leuven's mm. just seems outstanding. Yeah, and it it strikes you as well that okay, there's a lot more style about Sheffield Wednesday with the calibre of player, but the steel is there. 
you, you've got to have it. You've got to have different ways because you, you are going to face, um, you know, not not just one thing over the course of the game and over the course of the season. You're going to have to deal with a team that maybe plays long. You have to deal with a team that's got quick players in and deal with a team that pass the ball about. But you will have to deal with different consequences. And if you've got a team that can't do that, you're going to struggle a little bit. But Is that one of the strengths of Wednesday and the, Carv Carlos Carvalho's strategy that he seems to have a team for all? Types of football yeah, but, occasions. Yeah, because, well, Wednesday's a big club, and they should always have that. But the, the thing is, if you if you look at Wednesday now, I think there's about eight or nine of them with Premiership experience now performing in the Championship. That's the strength of Wednesday. You know, it, and it, if you look, I, I, I wouldn't be able to get it down to the nearest pound, but I would guess that the six highest wage bill and the six biggest spenders finished in the top six, and vice versa down the bottom. Mm. And you you won't be far off, and usually you get one. And it happens all the time in the Premiership. You, you sometimes get one who overachieves and one who really underachieves. And I would guess this year that Leicester are that overachievers and yeah. Aston Villa at night. Not Wouldn't just in, in overachieving, but the way they've done it. I looked at the possession stats for the two Championship playoff semi finals, and over the two games, the teams that lost had the greater possession. Uh, lion's share of possession in the case of Derby against Hull, yeah. and Brighton had more possession than Sheffield Wednesday. Mm. Yeah, it, it's the, that's the biggest misnomer in football. That and they put that on the television. The possession stats don't mean anything. The, the stat that matters the most is obviously the score, mm. but the stat is how many shots you're having at the goal, how many you've got on uh, on target, and like you know which way you're going. I'd, it used to drive me mad at Bolton. They used to go on about this. We had a, 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 a an IT department there that was second to none. It was brilliant. From I, Sam's days, Sam, yeah, Sam Allardyce. Yeah, and you know I went in, loved it, changed it to how I wanted it to work, but really enjoyed working with them. And one of the things was possession. And every time like, we, we didn't have, like, we were way down on the opposition's possession. And so I said to them, right, change it then. I want the possession in the attacking half of each one because our centre halves aren't passing it across the back and back no. to the goalkeeper, out the left back, out the right back to yeah. tap tap. It's misleading. Enough. We're trying to score. Yeah. And, and like, so then when we did that, entirely different where the possession was. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what makes a difference because. You know, I watch teams like the, you know, they're passing the ball across the back and it goes into the full back and it goes back to the goalkeeper, it goes out the other side. And that counts as possession. Yeah. The team, if I had the opposition, we wouldn't be trying to stop that. You can have that all day long, but the minute one comes forward, we want to get on top of that one yeah. and get the ball back. But not the square one, you can have that all day. And Leicester have been the greatest exponents of proving debunking all this uh, possession theory, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, and, and it's... Uh, it's good to see because like, one of the strange things is that I'm, I'm watching now is there's a lot of teams um, being run by foreign managers playing British football. You know, I do, because like the best team in the world by a street, in my view, is Barcelona, right. and they pass it and pass it and pass it. And like the reason they're so good isn't the passing; they've got all world-class players on there. Yeah. But when Pep was manager of them, the one thing he installed in all of them. Messi, the whole lot, had to get the ball back within, I think it was eight passes. Right. So they're closing the ball down, yeah. exactly like Leicester are doing now, yeah, yeah. and like British teams used to do, but it's been taken by foreign people and brought back to us. Mm. Carlos as, as well, because you watch how quickly Sheffield Wednesday get the ball mm. back, uh, scurrying around. Klopp. And Klopp, Klopp. Klopp yeah. cleaned up in, uh, in Germany, yeah. doing exactly the same yeah. things. But I'm sure it, it won't go full circle. I don't think we'll ever see the long ball game again, just whacking it up there and pressing and pressing. But I think pressing will, will become a big, big part of football. Mm. It's two different games, isn't it? One with the ball, one without. Mm. There's only you know, two facets to football. Yeah. You either got it or you ain't. People say it's a simple game. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure. Is, is that right? Is that absolutely right? It is a simple game. or Because we're talking about it for an hour here. But it's not, it's, it's not a simple game because there's that many parts of it. It's simple if you just talk about it in terms of, right, you've yeah. either got the ball or you ain't got the ball. Right. But there's like, you know, when you, when you go in at a club, yeah. you have to get results. You might not have the best players. You've got to find a way of getting results. And like, you know, like, like I'm saying, I, I, think, um, I think Sheffield United will do well next year. Brilliant, because uh, we're going to come on to that with Chris Wilder in the second part, because that's flown. First half has flown. Gary, stay with us. Stay with us for five minutes. Just go and make a cup of tea. Come back in five. Loads to talk about, including Wembley. We'll see you then. Bye.